Hello and welcome to the video by Trump Excel. I am Sumit Bansal and in this video I am going to show you how to find the last matching occurrence of an item in a list using Excel functions. So here I have these names and I have the meeting dates for these names. And what I want here is that as soon as I make a selection from this list, I want this to return the date which is for the last occurrence of that name, the date that corresponds to the last occurrence. So in this case, I've selected Martha and you can see there is Martha here as well, but I want this date here, which is for the last occurrence of that name. Similarly, if I come here and I select Mike, then I want this date here because this is the last occurrence. Now, this can be done using Excel functions. So in this video, I'm going to show you two Excel functions to do this, which is inbuilt Excel functions. And we will also create a custom function using VBA to do this. So here I have a different workbook and I have the same data here. So I'll show you how to do this from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is select this data set, this, these names, insert a new worksheet and copy these names here because what I want to do is create a drop down list here in cell D3. And to do that, I need a list of unique names and this list has duplicates. So I first need to remove these duplicates. So I would select these names, go to the data tab and click on remove duplicates. And when I click on this, it opens the remove duplicates dialog box. And here I have column A selected because that is where my data is. And I have my data has headers option unchecked because my data does not have headers. In case your data does have headers, make sure this is checked. And now when I click OK, it'll remove the duplicate values and only give me the unique ones. It says seven duplicate values found and removed. Now I would go back to sheet one and in cell D3, I would select this cell, go to the data tab and click on data validation. And in data validation dialog box, I would click on list here. So within the settings tab in this drop down, I would select list and I would have to specify the source of those names, those unique names. So I would click on this upward pointing arrow, go to sheet two and select these names. And now when I click OK, it'll give me the list of these names here. Now let's see the formula that we can use to get the meeting date, which corresponds to the last occurrence of this name. So in this case, what we are going to use is the fact that the last occurrence would always have a higher row number. So the last occurrence of Mike would always have row number 13, which is higher than row number three here. So we are going to use this fact to create a formula. So the first thing I'm going to check is what all cells here have the name Mike. So I would select this entire range of cells, press F4 and equate it to this cell here, which is D3. Now, if I select this and press F9 to see the result of this part of the formula, you can see it gives me an array of trues and falses. Here, a true would be whenever there's a matching name and false when there is no matching names. Now I'm going to multiply this with the row numbers. So I would use the ampersand, sorry, the uh, asterisk sign, and I would use the row numbers in this case. I press F4 to lock this. And this part of the formula, the row part of the formula, would return the row numbers of these cells. So when I multiply this with an array of trues and falses, it would return this data set where it is going to give me the row number of the matching name. So whenever there is Mike, it would give me the row number, else it is going to give me zero. Now I can find the maximum or the highest row number by using the max function here. And now when I hit control shift enter, because this is an array, it is going to give me 13 because 13 is the row number where we have Mike. And let's see if this works for all the names. So if I select Glenn, it gives me 11. So this is working. This is giving me the maximum row number or the last row number where there is the last occurrence of the name. But this is the row number in the Excel workbook. This is not the row number in my data set because my data set starts from the second row onwards. So I would have to subtract one from it. But before I do that, I'm going to wrap this within some product so that I don't have to use uh, control shift enter. Now I can simply use enter and it will give me the right result and let's subtract one from this. So this gives me 10, which means Glenn is in the 10th position in this data set. If I come here and I select Jane, it gives me 13, which means Jane is in the 13th position in this data set. And now 
I can simply use index function. So this would be my array. I would press F4 to lock this. And this part here, the sum product formula, which was returning the position, would act as the row number, the second argument in the index function. Now when I hit enter, it gives me this number, which is the date serial number. I can go to the home tab and here I can click on short date and it will give me the date here. Let's see if this is working. Jane, it returns the right date. Let's check for Mike. It's giving 16th, which is again right. Let's check for Scott. It's giving 9, which is again right. So this formula is working and this is how you can use the fact that the last occurrence would always have the highest row number and then use this to fetch the date. Now, let's see another formula of doing this and this would be the lookup formula. So a lookup formula takes three arguments. The first one is the lookup value. The second one is the lookup vector. And the third one is the result vector. Now, first, let me talk about the lookup vector part here. So the lookup vector in this formula would be one divided by an array of trues and false based on whether there's a matching name or not. So let me press F4 here. And if I select this part, it would give me an array of trues and falses based on whether there's a matching name there or not. So if I press F9, you can see it gives me trues and falses. And there are trues whenever there's a matching name. And when I divide one by this array, it is going to give me another array, but this array would have errors or one because I'm dividing one by trues and falses. A false is zero in Excel and a true is one in Excel. So when I divide one by one, it gives one. And when I divide one by zero, it gives me a division error. So see what happens when I press F9, it gives me these errors and it would, it would give me one whenever there is a matching instance. So in this case, in this case, there's a matching name, which is Scott. Let me press Control Z. So this would be my lookup vector. Let me copy this and let's create the lookup formula. So in this case, the lookup value would be two. The lookup vector would be the vector that we just created. And the result vector would be these dates. Now see what happens when I hit enter, it returns this serial number of the date. I would go to home and select short date here. And you can see this is giving the right result, the same result uh, as compared to the previous formula. So you can see it's working fine. Now, uh, let, let's go through this formula quickly. The lookup value in this case is two. And in this case, this array, it is made up of ones and division errors. Now, in case of lookup formula, if it can find the exact match, it would return the corresponding value from the result vector, which is meeting date column. But if it cannot find an exact match, it would convert itself into an approximate match formula, which means it is going to look for the value two in this entire array. And if it cannot find two, it would return the last value, which is lower than the lookup value, which would be one because the maximum value in this case is one. So it is going to return the last one. And based on that position, we get the matching meeting date number. So this is how the lookup formula works. Now, let's see the third way of doing it, which is by creating a custom function in VBA. So to do that, I would go to the developer tab and here I would click on visual basic option here. You can also use the keyboard shortcut Alt F11. And this is going to open the VB editor in the backend. So when I click on this, it opens the VB editor here and I have book one. This is the name of my workbook and I have these sheets and this workbook object. I would right click on any of these go to insert module and this would insert the module code window where I would write my code. So in this case, since it's a function, it would start with function and then the name of the function, which we can call it last item lookup. You can call your function anything you want. And in these parentheses, I have to specify the arguments that this function would take. So just like we look up function, we are going to create a similar function but VLOOKUP looks for the first matching value and we are going to create a function that looks for the last matching value. So in this case, it's again going to take three arguments just like VLOOKUP. First would be the lookup value and this would be a string type because we have names in this case. The second one would be lookup range lookup range and this would be a range data type because we are going to specify the cell references. And the third num third one would be a column 
number which would be an integer because here we're going to specify that we want the uh, matching value from the second column or the third column onwards. Now this is the function that we have and let me quickly declare a couple of variables. So I would say dim i as integer and dim result as string. Now uh, what I need to do in this case is I need to analyze all these names. So what I need to do is I need to take this as an input and go through all these names and whenever it finds a matching name, I need to find the last instance and return the meeting date. So what I'm going to do with this VBA function is I'm going to go through these names, but instead of going uh, through these names from top to bottom, I'm going to go uh, through these from bottom to top. So as soon as it finds the instance of Glenn, when it's going from bottom to top, it would return this name, uh, this uh, meeting date and exit the function. So it essentially what it does is it finds only one matching name, but because we are going from bottom to top, it becomes the last instance of that name. So here I would use for i is equal to because I'm going to run uh, a loop here and I would say lookup range dot columns in this case it would be column number one dot cells dot count to one step minus one and don't worry I'm going to explain this exactly uh, how this works let me first quickly create this VBA code so I would say if lookup value is equal to lookup range dot cells i comma one then last item lookup is equal to lookup range dot cells i comma column number. Now I would come here and I would say I'll have to exit the function in this case. I would say exit function. Come here, say and if next i. And in this case, I've just realized we don't need the result one. I usually use this when I create functions, but in this function, we don't need a result. So I'm going to delete that part. And now let's see if this function works or not, and then I'll explain how this works. So I would look for the function which is last item lookup and you can see uh, shows up in the IntelliSense in the list of functions and the first argument would be the name that I'm looking for which is uh, in D3 so I give the cell reference for that the second is the range the lookup range which would be this one let's press F4 to lock this and the third would would be the column number so since we want the date from the second column two would be the column number and now when I hit enter it returns the serial number I would go to home short date and it gives me this and let's see if this is working fine so i select this one and you can see all these formulas are returning the same result so this formula is working well now let's go back and see how this formula works uh, it's a very short code here where our function takes three arguments and what we are going to do is we are going to run this loop and how many times should we run the loop we would run this by first counting the number of cells here in this lookup range so in the first column we we first count the total number of cells. So this is done by this part here, lookup range.columns.cells.count. So this would give me 13 here because there are total 13 cells here. And this loop would run from i is equal to 13 to one. So instead of running this loop from one to 13, I'm running it backwards and I've used step minus one. What this allows me to do it instead of going from top to bottom, it allows me to go from bottom to top. And now it simply does one thing. It checks whether the lookup value, which is this value here, is equal to the cells value. If it is, then it'll uh, give me this date and exit the function. And if it is not, then it'll keep on going. So in case of Jenny, it'll first check with Jane. Then it'll go to Mike, then Scott, Glenn. And until it finds Jenny, it'll keep on going. And when it finds Jenny, it'll return this date here, this value from this second column and it would exit the function. So this is how this VBA code works. Now, when you have a VBA code, you need to make sure that you save the workbook as .xlsm file. And when you have the code in the backend, you can use this function in any of these sheets anywhere, just like any uh, other regular function. 
So in this video, we've seen three ways of finding the last matching occurrence of an item in a list. Uh, the first one was using sum product index and rows formula. So we found out the maximum row number and we found out uh, the matching name and the corresponding date. The second one was using a lookup formula and the third one was using a custom VBA function. That's it in this video. I hope you found this useful. Thank you and have a nice day.